guys uh, welcome to leaves and lungs so today it's going to be very very important topic and i think uh, you must be very much aware of all the thing that is happening right now about the locust swarms that has been affecting the huge states of maharashtra gujarat rajasthan and uh, even there has been like warnings that it's been coming to delhi uh, like very soon so that is why you should be like very much focused on this locust because this is a very very important topic in terms of agriculture and so i i want every single one of my subscribers to watch this video because it is very very important for your exams as well as for your general knowledge purpose also so uh, i'll tell you about the things that this uh, very very important for your exams as well as for your gk preparations first of all i'll tell in this video about what is locust and uh, how to control it and uh, how does it spread actually so what are the factors that are very much favorable for the formation of huge swarms of locust so all these very pretty basic important topics that we'll be discussing one by one first of all what is locust so locust is actually a collection of a uh, uh, huge millions of grasshoppers it is not a single organism it is a group it is a collective noun that is given to the millions and millions of grasshopper that is flying across states to states as well as to countries and countries so basically so this is how this tropical grasshopper looks like the tropical grasshoppers is very much different from the normal grasshoppers in terms because of it the flight capacity is very much limited in our grasshoppers whereas this locust grasshopper is very much confined for flying huge amount of distances across continents across seas and everything so uh, these are basically tropical region grasshoppers so the chances of them uh, presenting in uh, europe or uh, down below at south america is very rare and uh, there are different kinds of locust some locust might be present in some forest or some locust also present in deserts so the most dangerous forms of this locust is that are the ones that are occurring that are forming that are reproducing in the desert regions of africa the desert regions of middle east so these are the ones that you should must be very very aware and also like the government should keep their eyes and ears open for this kinds of locust attack because they have a devouring effects on the crops and agriculture because uh, what is the thing what is the thing they causes they eat almost all the crops on the way and they destroy all the crops irrespective of what the crop is that doesn't have any mercy on the crops and the farmers so basically like if you see a square kilometer covered with a locust there are about 80 to 100 million just imagine there are some hollywood movies made upon the locust attacks you could watch them or there has been like plenty of videos that has been shared in instagram and twitter about the locust swarms in jaipur you can like just google through it you will know how serious the problem is so what is the actual causes that there has been a sudden burst of locust so if you've been like following the news there has been like a lot of uh, warning that has been given in the past that uh, the locust has been spreading from african deserts so usually locust a phenomenon is very usual in those parts but what made this year that locust travel from far from africa to the indian deserts the main causes is the climate change so we'll be discussing very detail about the climate change what caused the rapid production of the locust and the westerlies so if you are a follower of upsc then you might have known what are westerlies are i will tell also about that and the poor control of the neighboring countries so like many news and many facebook theories have like showed that pakistan has been reproducing tons and tons of uh, locust swarm to do a biological attack on india that is absolutely rubbish bullish because you can't create such a swarm of uh, locust because it can be a double edged sword because if pakistan tries to do that then the crops would have been like totally demolished before even coming to india so that is the chances very very less for that theory to be true so like what is the main cause so usually if you imagine saudi arabia so this is a desert of saudi arabia if you imagine a desert of saudi arabia you'll never find any floods occurring there but because of due to severe climate changes crisis that is happening all over the world the most desert prone regions of the world has been now flooded with huge amount of rainfall that has been never been anticipated ever before in the history of saudi arabia so that is why the sudden influx of huge amount of flood waters have caused rapid changes in their environment and ecology and one such devastating effect on the ecology is the breeding of the locust 
okay so this is the the flooding that happened in the deserts is one of the main cause just remember that because of this huge amount of waters that has been spreading everywhere across the desert it favored a breeding ground for these locust to breed multiply into millions and millions so this is one of the pictures that has been taken from the saudi arabian desert so from saudi arabia it has spread to saudi arabia it has spread to yemen it has spread to iran it has spread to pakistan and then finally it arrived to india right now okay so because of the presence of waters for the favorable condition for the locust to multiply and reproduces this thing has been happening from the past years and there has been like warnings that has also been given by various country when it reached saudi arabia the saudi arabian government gave the warning to the next country and when it reached iran desert iran government gave the warning and finally like pakistan was affected very much and also they have been also giving warning finally right now it's landed in india and all of a sudden the indian government is like not prepare anything how much the covid crisis to handle what else to do and the second factor that favors the distribution of the locust to the indian continent is the westerlies or western disturbances so western disturbances are nothing but these are the eastern flowing winds from western region okay so winds flows from europe to india okay that is from west to east and this favors and what are the insects breeding sites that is happening around the saudi arabia and the middle east desert so this wind just blows the thus favors the travel of the locust much easier so they can like easily spread from the african deserts to the saudi arabian desert and from saudi arabian deserts right now it is landed here okay so these are westerlies if you want to know more much about the westerlies you can always go through the ncrts that is given in geography section because they have given like better about the uh, time period and uh, what are the months that might cause westerlies and this phenomenon is the result why there has been like huge occurring of rain over the saudi arabian deserts if you if you just take the example landmass of india you have indian ocean here this is bay of bengal this is arabian sea this is indian ocean so this forms the western part of the indian ocean and this forms the eastern part of the indian oceans okay here you have the arabian peninsula so if the western part of the indian ocean gets warmed okay if it is heated the wind starts to blows from high towards the arabian desert land so when this warming occurs in the western region there has been like huge rainfall that happens over the arabian landmass so when the rainfall comes down here it favors for the formation of locust do you get it so this is called as indian ocean dipole and it is one of the major factor that has contributed for the formation of uh, the uh, locust swarm that has been happening right now so this is also geographical concept so if you're a upsc aspirant or if you're preparing for indian forest service or any other uh, government service exams you have to go through these uh, basic topics westerlies is an important topic indian ocean dipole is an important topic so all this thing you should have to keep in mind so these are the various factors that have contributed to the growth of locust this year and uh, okay so i've told you the factors and uh, there has been like some interesting phenomenon that has been happening in uh, some districts of pakistan so what happened is due to their poor control of the locust in that part of the region uh, the government has decided to trap the locust that is you just catch the locust and you just convert those locusts into feeds for chicken okay can you get it these insects are like providing the nutritious proteinaceous food to the uh, poultry industry and thus they have like change the scenario of about a disaster to a like economy livelihood for the farmers so this has also been giving some huge ransoms of money to the uh, pakistani farmers there has been article published everywhere about how the locust feeds have been uh, transferred uh, that is uh, it's it's been gaining popularity many people are actually like benefiting from the locust that is one of the weird thing that you will ever hear so like uh, the project name is catch locust earn money save crops so this is the thing that is happening in pakistan right now so here you can see the bags and bags of clusters of locusts that has been captured and this been like uh, like a farmer can earn 20000 per night just because of this locust catching so can you see the locust is also giving livelihood and this strategy might can be utilized in india as well because india has a huge base of poultry feeds and uh, these forms the uh, nutritious protein foods which can never cause any side effects 
so it could be a strategy that can be employed by the indian government also so you can you can just go through the uh, like the points that i have provided here so how to control low cost so these are the pretty much basic things that you employ to control any insect uh, outburst so if there if the volume of the insect is so large then you should have to employ it from the uh, drones or aircraft so this is like pretty basic thing here you spray tons and tons of pesticides okay so this is one of the easiest and very dangerous method to control the locust because the chemicals and the pesticides is going to have huge impacts on our water bodies and also on the lives of a uh, uh, human food cycle also so the other thing is selective through the control staff by pro by using protective clothes and spraying on the uh, affected plants and uh, localizing the uh, locust and just spraying on it above so this is like somewhat an acceptable procedure and also like you can spray the uh, like chemicals from the ground vehicles also so these are the basic modalities where you can like kill the locust or any other forms of insecticides or uh, any uh, outburst of attack also so these are the uh, like control measures so before employing the chemical method there is also like some few indigenous natural pesticides like neem tree oil so if you use this neem tree oil and spray on the uh, spray on the crops then uh, there is a repulsive action uh, for these uh, locust the locust will never come to the plant so this is one of the main methods so it is also very much 100% harmless because it's not going to affect the quality of the fruits or vegetables that is grown on the uh, horticulture fields and is also it's 100% safe for human consumption also so like as i said in the earlier slides uh, protective clothing fumigators and aircraft by employing these you can also control the locust swarms so this is one of the major and important point that if you write in your exam papers then sure then you are like going to fetch some huge marks because fao has recently ordered some million tons of metarhizium to control the population of locust in the african desert lands okay so the species that is employed here is metarhizium so what does this metarhizium actually do is like they like just infects the grasshopper and finally they just do like this can you see they just wholly infest the entire grasshopper and kill the grasshopper it is also one of the safest form of uh, measures to control the locust swarms and finally uh, the easiest and the most dangerous is applying chemicals over the entire fields the the chemical that has been mainly used is diclovars just remember the name by writing the name alone then you can easily like get some good marks so it is also known as ddvp it's a very very potent insect insecticides and uh, there has been like current affairs regarding this where it uh, it was been like estimated to be banned by december 31st because this chemic this chemical of uh, like insecticide has been banned in very uh, like many many uh, developed nations such as europe and also in america but uh, we have don't we don't have any other options because uh, the swarm is getting nearer and nearer and you have to employ some way to control the locust swarm so hence uh, diclovars is one of the potential options to be used but the pesticide is a part of organophosphate organophosphate groups so organophosphate groups be causes like very much uh, so many deaths in the farmers when they consume it accidentally so that is why it has been like argued by the food safety activists that you should not use this kind of fertilizers to control the locust swarm so instead of that just use the indigenous uh, neem oil or just use the uh, bio pesticides and all kinds of those non chemical measures first and if it fails then you just go for the chemicals so this is how the control of the locust can be brought upon and i have also discussed to you about how locust can help you to grow economically also because it is a it's an effective strategy that has been followed in pakistan so i guys uh, so this is very very important topic you have to know it by heart because you'll be getting some one or two questions for sure like uh, corona is there but also locust is also very important this year so you might be tested randomly in any exams be it upsc be it ifs be it any agriculture exam you could be getting a question surely so just go through it and also do some basic researches about the species involved so this would give you just a general idea if you were like about to write an essay these points would be like very much suffice to get some good marks so i got so i think uh, i'll just put an end to this today's lecture because it's been like a bit longer than what we usually do so guys please do support the channel because i need the support very much immense right now because after that only i can like give more and more content for you so guys thanks for watching this video and have an awesome day